want us to take it very easy. We're here to work. I know we've got obviously the, the time to be here and network, but I want to say to people when we come in here, this is the time for us to work. Let's forget about uh, being officials. Let's take this opportunity to learn what's going on in the industry, what is happening in the markets. Um, I'm happy the minister is finally joined and welcome, sir. Um, because he's here and we've wasted a lot of time before we start. I won't say much. I want to say you're all welcome. Please enjoy the rest of the day. Pick up as many cards. Don't sit with the person you can be from. If I see you with, with someone from Namibia next to you and from Namibia, I'll move you from the seat. I want you to sit with someone from Mauritius or from another country so that we can make the most of this time. Is that okay? All right. Let me give the time to put this so that we can get into it. I don't think we need to waste any more time. We've got people online also who have already joined us um, from 9 o'clock, so let's not waste time. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Good morning once again. Uh, thank you, Michael. It's so great to be here. It's great to be back in uh, Mauritius and I wish you all. All protocols. It's good to see you, Minister. Um, you know, in terms of thinking about the opening remarks um, or setting the scene, uh, I was just thinking back to the last ESG forum um, which I attended, and you know, it was in person, and it's, it's so nice to see people in person again. We've gone through a lot, you know, in the past three years, and I was just like counting. I'm just reflecting on the fact that you know, it's just. just come out, not completely come out of COVID, but I think the lockdowns have been uh, dramatically uh, reduced, and we're also still in the throes of climate change. So these are pertinent environmental and social issues that are hitting our, our financial markets in a real way. So I think if ever there was a doubt that you know environmental and social issues do have a financial impact, I, I don't think that doubt would be there anymore. And when you actually look at some of the developments of the past three, four years, there's been a lot of activity, even through the lockdown period, that is actually showing us that, you know, from a sustainability perspective, we are on the African continent are, you know, moving you know, full steam ahead and in some instances leapfrogging certain developments across the, the globe. And when you see that many of our African countries have been engaging in green bond principles, that we have a number of our stock exchanges having listed green bonds and now moving into sustainability bonds. So you can see that even from a response in terms of investment opportunity, these are now being created by the market. And you've also had a, a big focus on the transition to green economy. So I think many of us have heard of this term of the just transition and now you know we are moving from awareness that there needs to be a just transition now to say what are the solutions that we need to actually then go into the just transition and what are the various responsibilities that the different locales in the market um, have in making sure that we move our economies from where they are into green economies that are also just in the sense that they're inclusive of all the people that we are you know, responsible for making decisions for in terms of the financial markets. And you've also seen the prominence of the sustainable development goals. Um, and these have been a, a very useful framework in some instances in terms of just framing how we look at sustainability from an E and SMG perspective. Because quite easily, you know, E, S, and G can be seen as something very abstract. And what I really like about the SDGs is that they start with the quote to say, when you think about environmental issues, you know, you can link it very clearly to your, your, your climate action SDG. And so it, it, you've seen that, you know, there's now been a growing response in terms of understanding and, and embracing the SDGs. And I think what we'd like to see going forward is like how are they investing products and uh, being, being created that reference SDGs. And we've seen quite a bit of work that we've done by the likes of the PRI providing guidance to say how do you then incorporate the SDGs into your investment strategy setting and even more impact measurement as, a, as an investor. And most importantly for me is there's a great pressure to, to, to demonstrate the impact that the financial market is having 
um, through the ESG decisions that are made on the communities, on the environment. So we have moved from saying that we take care of ESG aspects from a risk perspective to now um, the, the economy, the people want to see, you know, okay, we're making all these decisions, we're talking about ESG, we're putting structures in place, we're putting policies in place, but what impact are we actually having and are they actually giving us a desired impact on moving our economies to a more sustainable um, juncture? And coupled with that is also the risk that comes with greenwashing. So we've had a, a quite a number of scandals in the media around greenwashing. So yes, there is pressure to demonstrate that impact. But in some instances, people are really embellishing um, uh, in terms of what they do. So there's a lot of things that we need to contain with. So I'm very excited that with, with this particular program, we'll be able to unpack some of these in a very conversational way. And we definitely would like for, for, for the audience um, not only here, but for you as well, uh, who are joining us um, on Zoom, to be active and just ask questions because that's the idea of the forum for us to have a conversation. So we don't want to have too many presentations, but we really just want to have a conversation and walk away knowing that you know we are moving one step closer or one step forward or two steps forward. And what you are starting to see also that from a career perspective, it's been really interesting to watch how many roles that are popping up almost every month, you'll see two or three ESG roles being advertised. Um, so you're seeing that not only are we talking about this thing, but you're seeing that the market, even from a human capital perspective, is now starting to um, demand the talent, but also nurture the talent. And so from that perspective, I think we are, we are in a good space. So now we need to just inform. Um, so with that, I'd like to then Welcome our first speaker. Um, this is Ms. Uti Tembe from the uh, SYT National Property Fund. And she will be giving us a talk and, and um, you know, get, get, getting our minds open in terms of setting the scene for the rest of the conversations that we will have. So, with that, I'd like to welcome you once again. And I'd like to welcome Uti to the stage to make a proper presentation. And good governance. Um, the trustees who are in our list, Captain of Industries, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, it gives me such great honor to stand in front of all of you and present the experience of my organization. I, I trust that you've had a chance to look at the topic that I'm talking to. Um, so as I stand in front of you, it's just to share the experience that we've had uh, with regards to the application of ESGs in, 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 in the context of local investment, that is direct local investment that, that the entity that I work for gets involved in. So, um, and I hope, I do hope that the, the talk, the presentation would be useful. There is something that we're going to take out uh, from it. So, um, how I'm going to go through the discussion, I will first talk to the um, Swatini, unfortunately, let me try to present from here. I will first talk to I'll take you through the profile of the organization that I work for, then look at the process, the selection process that we go through uh, in, in the selection of any local direct investment that we, we end up um, taking on board. And then I will then talk to the investment spread that um, we're currently sitting on when it comes to local and international. And then uh, lastly, go through the ESG consideration that, that, that we do with all the local direct investments. So before, before I, I, I go straight into the presentation, 
I, I think it is very important for me to give the context. Who is Futi and why am I standing in front of you, the role that I do at Eswatini National Profit Fund. I'm a chartered accountant, having obtained the qualification in 2009. I also hold a Master's in Business Leadership and currently doing a Global Executive Development Program with Gibbs, which is at a university based in Johannesburg. Um, my title is General Manager of Business Development and Finance, and what I'm accountable uh, for is all investments of the fund, that is uh, from the selection to the monitoring of, of the investments, both local and uh, international investments. I am also in charge of the financial affairs of the fund, i.e. the proper upkeep of, of the books of the fund. And lastly, I'm in charge of the information and communication um, department. I also hold eight board seats in the various sectors in Eswatini. Um, I've listed the sectors um, hospitality, health, retail, forestry. And um, how I get to sit on eight boards is because as an organization, we've taken a stand that in all the investment, the local investments that we invest in, we need to have direct oversight of the operations. So hence the, the, the number of seats. In, in two of the boards, I, I, I hold the chairmanship seat, and I also hold four audit and risk uh, committee chairmanship seats. Retirement Fund, a national provident, um, and it was established in 1974. And its purpose is to provide retirement benefits on retire from formal employment. It also provides that benefits and on disability in the event one becomes incapacitated. And uh, just a brief stats about the organization. It has a membership of 164 active members, um, 6.9 employers, um, staff complement is 99. It has 13 trustees or board of directors for which 12 are independent. And it also has five committee committees, including the investment committee. Um, the vision that the organization has is a world-class social security that contributes positively to its members, contributes to the Eswatini through social economic development, improves the financial sector of Eswatini, impacts positively to the environment of Eswatini. So this is the vision that we developed in 2020. And um, what I would like to show is, as I go on with the presentation, I'll be illustrating how these uh, four factors of the vision are, are then um, made to, 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 to live as we continue with our investment processes. Um, and why the vision that we have? Um, what ENPF discovered was previously we were more concerned about the financial returns 
we're more concerned about um, giving members uh, a better return. But we, we soon realized that we had a, a deeper responsibility as a profit fund. We had a responsibility of impacting positively the economy, the, 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 the society in which we live in. Because we soon realized that if we take the funds offshore, the, the, the countries that we invest in will soon develop and Swaziland will be left at a state where, yes, we pay better returns, but the members won't be able to utilize the fund. So hence the change in, 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 in our vision and hence the change in our investment strategy. So, so, so the, the vision, as you saw, is now more concerned about impactful investment in the sense that we look at um, if that investment will give financial returns. And if it does, we tick because we positively impact the members of the fund. We also look at the social, the social economic aspect of it. Is that investment um, giving employment to Swazis? Is it developing the country in terms of infrastructure, in terms of schools, hospitals, and et cetera? And we then also look at how it is impacting the environment before, before we, we we, we, we decide to invest in any of the investments that are brought or that we, we, we consider. We then look at how it impacts the, the environment that uh, we live in because we soon realize that if we just take investments based on the returns, based on employment creation, but if it depletes the environment, then we are depleting the environment and the future generations will soon find that the environment has been depleted. through the, the, the due diligence uh, taken before any investment in, is done locally. Um, what we try to ascertain, as I've already stated in my previous uh, conversation, is does that investment improve the social economic condition of a SWATIN? Does it not deplete the environment in which such business operates? Are workers treated fairly? Um, are corporate government principles adhered to? And does it deliver the, the, the type of returns that we always look forward to receiving as ENPF? Um, total assets of the fund, we're currently sitting at a as a base of um, 6.5 billion emanangeni, which is equivalent to 6.5 billion rands. And when we convert that to USD, it's equivalent to 417,000 USD. Um, coming to the investment spread, as at 2021, 56% of our investments were sitting in the local space, with only 44% invested offshore. Before the decision to, to, to bring investments uh, locally or to do more investments locally, the spread was sitting at 30% locally and then 70% offshore were just complying with um, the regulator's rules because the requirement 
is 30% must be locally. But after the change in, in our strategy, after coming up with a vision of developing the country, then we decided to invest all or most of fresh monies in the country. <coughs> and then this, um, this graph shows the direct investments local per set. So we invested in the highest sitting in the financial sector, followed by hospitality, and then followed, followed by forestry, shopping centers or shopping malls, the mobile space, agri-processing space, and we are currently uh, busy doing due diligence in the space of energy because Swaziland is reliant on, on South Africa and the contract that we have will be coming to an end soon. Hence, we need to be self-sustaining. So this, um, the slide that is showing shows the local direct investments, the companies that we invest in. It, it, it tries to compare 2020 to 2021. So as can be seen from the slide, um, we can see that the first one, the ITCE, is in the financial sector. So it's the highest local investment that we have, and it's just below 500,000 rands. Um, it's followed by Happy Valley. Happy Valley is in the hospitality sector, and um, we own 100% of this investment. And then, as per um, what was seen in the previous uh, slide, the, the, the pie chart, we, we had forestry as the third um, highest pie, and we invested in Montigny, and then the mobile space which is a Swatini mobile. What's very um, what I would like to for you to note with this presentation is we are seeing a growth in the asset base when you compare twenty twenty to twenty twenty one you will see that all the investments are increasing in value which means that um, it's it's there are operations or their investments that are working for the fund in terms of the returning. And then um, coming now to the application of the ESG in, 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 in the various investments, local investments that we do. So this is the hotel that we own 100%. And um, we bought this investment from a, a family, it was a family business before we took over. Um, it was run by foreigners. Um, when we bought it, we found that there were no governance practices um, in the operation of Happy Valley. So what we did, the first thing that we did, because there was no board in place, we immediately set a, 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 a board that had independent um, board members with um, experience in the hospitality space. And we also put in place processes. Sorry. Sorry, I continue. This is what I'm talking about. So um, we, we, we also put processes and policies in place because what we realized when we, we took over, we bought this investment was um, there was no formal recruitment process. There was also no retention and no processes. Things were done as they pleased. So what we then did was we tried to put the governance um, principles, have those in place for, for the proper management of, of, of Happy Valley. And then when it comes to the social aspect, 
um, we ensured that all the employees had contracts in place and the contracts were long term. We, 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 we tried to make some of them permanent and, and, and also long-term contracts because uh, we knew that for us to get the right returns, we needed happy employees. So, so, so hence that move. And then with regards to the environmental factor, um, it wasn't a direct, um, a direct process that we followed. But when, when we took over, we decided to refurbish the, the, the hotel. We also decided to expand. So in that way, we made the area that Happy Valley is, is, is located um, a good site. It's now a tourist attraction. It used to be an eyesore. But now it's a, it's a, it's a tourist attraction. And, and the municipal council is now taking care of the infrastructure of, of, of that area because of the tourists that the hotel attracts to Swaziland. And then I've also then grouped um, the consumer type of investments. So with this, um, I. Most of South Africans, Namibians, I know we are familiar with pick and pay brand. So we own um, some shares in the pick and pay, which is a, a food retail business. Um, then the Swazi Plaza and the Bulu Mall, uh, these are shopping centers where we also have some stake. And then the Swazi Mobile is a, is a mobile company. So. We sit here as a board member. I think I've said it before that we always demand for board seats. At least one, but we always look for two. So we come here and, and, and we put policies in place. And how we always try to do it is the policies that we really like to first consider when we get into any investment are policies that are impactful to the society, the employees, because we know that if employees are happy, then the returns will be better. We also put policies or governance principles that are going to ensure that there are no leakages of funds. And what we've seen is, and, and, and previously, when we we did our uh, the strategy, the investment strategy, we're not uh, looking or closely or really interested in the governance space. But what we since realized is, if you get it wrong, the businesses or the business can close. So we now are very concerned when it comes to governance issues, governance principles in any of the investments that we we. We, 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 we invest in. And what we try to enforce is that we follow the king for or the king corporate governance principles. And then um, with all the, this investment, especially the Swazi Mobile investment, it's a relatively new investment. The reason we really liked it was the fact that it was going to create employment for Swaziland. Um, the unemployment rate is on the high side, so we really want to drive employment, stimulate the economy, because with a lot of people employed, the reaping effects are countless in the sense that they will use the funds, that the salaries that they get to, to buy from the informal sector or from the groceries. And so we, we always look or try to measure the ripping effects of, 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 of having, creating employment for, for, for the sources. And um, with the environmental, um, I can only talk in the context of Swazi Mobile. We all know that um, the current buzzword word in the mobile space is uh, carbon usage. Um, and, and, and we know that most 
mobile businesses are moving to the fifth uh, G, the five, the five G, and there has been talks that it might not be uh, good for the environment. So, what we have now done as the board of Swazi Mobile is do an investigation of the effects of of. Of, of that could be brought by, by by the usage or going into 5G. So in the governance space, then we try to um, deal with the social and the environment. And then um, I'm, about, I'm about to finish my presentation. So this is Montigny, which is um, an investment in the forestry space sector. Montigny was formed by three of the biggest entities in Swaziland, including um, ENPF. Um, what we did with Montigny, we bought um, assets from SAPI. SAPI, which was the biggest forestry business in, 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 in Southern Africa. So we own Montigny. And um, what I like about Montigny, even in this investment to sit on the board to, to set the government uh, principles, what I like about Montigny is it is contributing a, a very, very immensely when it comes to uh, creation of job. It is the highest um, employing company in Swaziland. It currently employs uh, 15,000 Swazis. And, and, and this company has created um, various communities where they, 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 they build schools, they build hospitals for, for, for the employees and for the community in which they operate in. And then how we've contributed to the environmental factor is we've put in policies that says before any tree is cut, there must be a plan to replant it so that the environment is not depleted. So um, the trees are cut and then the replanting is always done. Um, and that is really improving in, in terms of the environment not being depleted. And then, second last slide, um, the agri-business agri um, sector and also the, the industrial development company. Um, with regards to the IDCE, um, what we do is, it is a company that uh, lend money for industrial development purposes. So what we've done governance-wise is we've set policies that, um, for example, I'll talk uh, to the credit policy that we have, the ticks that we always look for when we are considering any investment is, is the investment or is the project that they want to do going to improve in, in terms of job creation in the, in the country. And we also look or tick the box of, is that project not going to deplete the environment in which that project will be implemented? So if those two factors are, are not got right, then we then decline that, that project if they come to borrow money. So we sit on the board, we set the policies. And then lastly, this is my last slide, which, which looks at the impact um, when it comes to the returns for our members now, coming from the local direct investment. Um, what was invested initially, we, we invested uh, 1.5 billion in the space. And what, um, as at end of last year, the current direct investment value was 3.2 billion. And we've seen an effective annualized return of 10.17. Um, that's annually for, that's an average that we did. So what I would like to 
then conclude with is um, if done right and if we do it with the mind of being impactful it really works for the economy it works for the members and the, the development um, really becomes um, impactful and it can also be measured um, that's what we've seen in the context of um, Eswat in the National Profit Fund. Just to state that when we look at our investment, ENPF is the number one investor at, um, in, in Eswatini. We've got more investment, local investment than any other entity just because of the intent that we had when we changed our investment strategy. Thank you so much for, for listening. presentations. I was so happy to sit through that. I was struck by some of the improvements that I've seen in terms of local investments in the Swazini because if I recall correctly, at some point I think we only had around 30% of um, investments held locally for Swazini. And I was very encouraged to see that you know we are sitting at around 44% now. And you know the kind of the South African exposure is reducing, so it's very impressive, and I'm, I'm happy to see that. I mean, not that we're happy to see South African assets or <laughs> assets move from South Africa, but it's really encouraging because it's signaling that you know you're, you're starting to find investment opportunities that there's, there's growth that's happening in areas Swati. And I was really struck by also um, the, the big focus on governance, not only from the fund level in terms of managing the fund. And also, you know, how involved and active the fund and the board is in terms of the investee companies. And it was really great to actually see that in action because I think, you know, when you look at um, sustainable investment, you need that activity. You, 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 you can't just invest and hope for the best and come to um, reap your rewards at the end of the day. You need to be active as investors. So it's really encouraging to also see that um, be highlighted in your presentation. And as someone who is in the employee benefits um, space, I was also quite encouraged by what you're doing, especially your focus on, um, on job creation and you know, making sure that people have decent work and actually have contracts that are you know, long-lasting contracts where they can actually have a job security and be able to have benefits so that they can you know, um, develop themselves. Because this speaks directly not only to SDG 8, and also speak to you know, the theme around social economic development. So um, I definitely look forward to the conversation we'll have with the other institutional investors tomorrow just to unpack this uh, a bit more. And I think lastly, the other thing that really struck me with the presentation was that you know you really highlighted in a very pragmatic way that you know when it comes to sustainability and sustainable investment, the industry globally has moved from just looking at risk and return but also looking at real world impact. So now we don't we no longer have two axes when you're looking at investments, the risk adjusted return. Now we have to say yes, we have a risk adjusted return, but what is the real world impact from an environmental or a social perspective? So thank you for that, uh, Ms. Tebe. And speaking of governance, um, I would like to take this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to um, welcome our special guest. Um, uh, Honorable Mayan Kumar Citrin, who is the Minister of Financial Services and Good Governance here in Mauritius. I'd like to say all protocols reserved, and I would like to invite the Minister to offer his official opinion remarks for us. Mr. Guest, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. Before we begin, uh, I would like to thank each and every one of you 
participating in this important forum today and to be coming into here in Mauritius. Though we are all stakeholders and key players in the complex fields of finance and governance, today is first and foremost about the future. The future of Africa, its people, its communities, its environment, but also the future of the world itself. For we are indeed an essential part of the world. The reason we are here today, ladies and gentlemen, is to lay the groundwork for the generation that will come after us and who will inherit what we leave behind. Today's remark tomorrow. Dear guest, as we begin this exciting edition of the Africa ESG and the AI at the end Forum 2022, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all to our beautiful island of Mauritius. As the Ministry of Financial Services and Good Governance, we cannot overemphasize the importance of stakeholders from various sectors engaging together in a platform of such dimension and reach. The Africa ESG and Africa Investment Fund and Asset Management Forum continues to be a key event in furthering our quest in reaching inclusive domestic economic developments with an emphasis on environmental protection. The next two days will be an opportunity to come together as key players in the economic development sphere from both the private and the public sectors and assess the situation on the ground so that we are able to make poor and wise decisions going forward. As you all know, ladies and gentlemen, two years ago, the COVID-19 pandemic brought the whole world to a halt. However, as communities around the world continue to recover from its negative impact on the world economy, the pandemic has taught governments from every country a valuable lesson. We cannot and must not continue to do things the way we have. The theme of our project gathering, enhancing long-term investment performance through sustainable investing, resonates with a global reality that we can no longer ignore and change. Economies across the globe need to invest in capacity building program that will allow us to make use of the new or alternative investment vehicles that have been brought to light by the fourth industrial revolution. Additionally, it is also about our responsibility to partake in the global discussion about the socio-economic challenges that are intensifying as a result of climate change. As such, dear guests and colleagues, allow me to call your attention to one very specific item on our agenda, the concept of alternative investment is not a plan B. It is an investment imperative. We are not here today to talk about our last resort should everything else fail. We are here to talk about what must be done to avoid failure itself. We are at a point at the global community where we have to accept that the world has changed and therefore so must our investment strategies. In a sense, ladies and gentlemen, these alternatives are the only chance we have. It is no longer about thriving, it is about survival of our, of our global economy itself. The Africa ESG 
and the AIFAN Forum 2022 happens at a time when environmental, social, and governance issues and values have become topical, not only here, but after the global investment community. As governments and authorities from around the world continue to navigate these uncharted waters, this is a chance for Africa to not only participate, but to lead the way. As such, this today conference has been carefully curated to place emphasis on addressing ESG integration and investment decisions, how it is also the ideal opportunity to draw the attention of institutional investors towards an array of investment opportunities in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, let us show the world that Africa can not only maintain a healthy economic performance throughout this period of transition and change, but that in fact, adopting sustainable and socially conscious practices and investment should be the only way to do so. For instance, in November of 2020, at a time when COVID-19 pandemic was still very much of actuality, the government of Mauritius solidified its commitment to social economic development by adopting the Climate Change Act 2020, which was specifically designed to establish a legal framework that was making Mauritius a climate change resident and low emission economy. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, in an effort to reverse the effects of climate change, the government of Mauritius has, through the Ministry of Environment, Solid Waste Management and Climate Change, developed a tool that will assist us in formulating and implementing long-term energy strategies. The Mauritius 2050 Pathways Calculator provides us with the data we need to allocate necessary resources towards the supply of renewable energy to reduce green, greenhouse gas emissions and at the, time, at the same time keep up with the energy demand of our population. And this is only the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, the climate change issue is not only an environmental concern, but also one with lasting effects on every aspect of societal life. Which is why, in 2021, the Bank of Mauritius came up with a framework for sustainable bonds, which included climate bonds. The same year, the Financial Services Commission also issued its green bond framework for private, for private issuers. Additionally, in October 2021, the Bank of Mauritius launched its Climate Change Center, which had as objectives, firstly, the integrating of climate-related and environmental financial risk into the bank's regulatory, supervisory, and monetary policy frameworks. Secondly, reviewing the bank's internal operations in view of reducing its carbon footprint and becoming a more sustainable organization. Thirdly, looking into enhancing disclosures on climate-related and environmental financial risk. Fourthly, supporting the development of sustainable finance Fifthly, building capacity and raising awareness for climate-related and environmental financial risk. And finally, bridging data gaps in relation to climate-related and environmental financial risk. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to say I'm particularly delighted to see many public-private representatives in this audience today. This is truly a testimony to your commitment in ensuring 
Our country's economy remains resilient even during the toughest times. Your plans today is proof that the public and private sectors can work together for the welfare of our global community. Together, we have pulled through global challenges before. Most recently, the 2008 and 2009 global financial crisis, and in spite of having had people even so slightly from our set plan in order to respond to the most pressing issues in the aftermath of the pandemic, I'm confident that we will thrive again as a country, as a continent, and as an unforeseen power to be reckoned with. Speaking on behalf of my team and myself, the Ministry of Financial Services and Good Governance is committed to ensuring that all efforts are made to create a conducive environment for private sector participation in economic development, especially within our growing ESG framework. I do hope that by the end of this Africa ESG AIFM Forum will really merge with solid investment commitments towards and environment-friendly projects, as well as a passion for ensuring that each and every decision henceforth is infused with the same spirit. In the words of the Scottish author Robert Wray, Stevenson, I quote, don't judge every day, each day, by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds you, you plant. And of good. With these words, ladies and gentlemen, who have come from far, I would like to wish you a fruitful interaction and thank you for inviting me to deliver this day my message. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Honourable Minister, um, and thank you for, the, for, for that last quote because I think you know your speech was really planting a lot of seeds for thought for our conversations, but it also was reflecting all the seeds that have been planted in terms of making sure that the environment, especially in Mauritius, the business environment is conducive. And, and I think one of the, the struggles that we all face in different markets is how do we then um, work together with regulators, with uh, government, and making sure that their intervention is also complementary to what the market is doing. So uh, we're very encouraged with all the progress that has been done, especially around climate change. And we really do thank you, and it really has planted seeds for ideas and for conversation. And with that, I'd like to then um, invite the delegates uh, to go on the network break. Uh, we'll be back at 11, and uh, then we'll resume with the rest of the program. So thank you very much, and thank you.